Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangs on a tree, Galatians 3.13. Here is a message by Leslie M. John, title, Redeemed. Redeemed, message by Leslie M. John, Redeemed from the curse of the law. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, Galatians 3.13. Redemption, in the context of New Testament doctrine, is getting something back for the price paid, in other words, setting forth a sinner free from the bondage of sin with the price paid by Jesus Christ on the cross. It is to deliver sinner by paying a price. According to 1 John 2 2 Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our sin, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. The propitiation is appeasement, or reconciliation. Jesus became propitiation for us. We need redemption and justification before being accepted as the child of God. It is not by silver or gold that we are redeemed but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He has purchased us by paying His blood as a price. Except by the blood of Jesus there is no salvation. No amount of good works of a person can save him from his sin. Good works cannot earn salvation. During the Old Testament period sacrifices were offered, but those sacrifices could not redeem a sinner from his sin. The sin of a person could be removed totally by the cleansing of it by the blood of Jesus Christ alone. He was sinless and He bore our sins upon Himself and died for our sake on the cross. Jesus did that which the law could not do. The law was weak through the flesh. Romans 8 3. God sent His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, and condemned sin in the flesh. Jesus knew no sin but He was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. 2 Corinthians 5:21. There are three things that take place in the process of redemption. It is buying sinner who is under bondage of sin. It is setting free the sinner from the bondage of sin, and it is freeing sinner from that bondage. It is like buying a product from the marketplace, secondly taking out from its place and thirdly freeing that product totally from that place for the use by its buyer. Every man is under the bondage of sin from the time he is born in the womb of his mother. Scripture says, there is no one righteous, and anyone who does not accept this fact makes God a liar. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. 1 John 1:10. Therefore, the man, who is under the bondage of sin, needs deliverance. This is what Christ did on the cross by dying in the stead of sinner taking upon himself the sins of the sinner fulfilling the law. A sinner who is redeemed is promised of everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6:23. Our bodies are made of dust and they return to dust but we rise in glory with glorified bodies. 
When the Lord comes the dead shall rise first and then those that are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to the meet the Lord in the air and be with Him forever and ever. 1 Thessalonians 4 16-17. The law pointed out sin, but the grace delivered us from the bondage of sin. Accepting Jesus as the Lord and Savior will set a sinner free from the bondage of sin. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, 1 Peter 1 18-19. Prayer in Gethsemane. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not as I will, but as thou wilt, Matthew 26 39. Just before Jesus was arrested he went to a place called Gethsemane, in the Mount of Olives, along with his disciples. He took three disciples, namely, Peter, James, and John, who were very close to him, to pray. He was very sorrowful about the impending death, wherein he had to bear the sin of the world, and lay his life for our sake. His sorrow was not because he was going to be arrested, or face a trial, which of course, proved to be an illegal one, but because the sin of mankind that he was going to bear was very heavy. It pleased the Father to bruise Him and pay the penalty for our sake and the very purpose of Jesus coming into this world, was to lay His life for our sake, taking upon Him, the curse of man and redeem us from perishing, compare Isaiah 53 10. His love for us was so great that He relinquished His glory in heaven, emptied Himself, and came in the form of servant, and in the likeness of man. It is so amazing that God, who was so unapproachable during the Old Testament period, humbled Himself so much so that He became man for our sake, and was in this world. He was fully divine and fully man on this earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1 1. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, John 1 14. Jesus taught repentance and said the kingdom of heaven was at hand. He was born Jew and was their Messiah, yet they did not understand the truth. He healed the sick, cast away evil spirits from those who were afflicted by them. When Jesus had spoken these words, He went forth with His disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, into which He entered, and His disciples. John 18 1 KJ 2000. While He was in the garden of Gethsemane, He said to His disciples to pray, and went little further and fell on His face and prayed to the Father saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from Me, nevertheless not as I will, but as Thou wilt. Notice Jesus prayed to the Father that if it were possible the death that He was going to face may pass, yet He said everything may be done, not according to His will, but according the will of the Father. If He prayed that the cup may pass without laying any condition, the Father would have, perhaps, agreed, and the purpose for which He came into this world would have been defeated. It was not the purpose of Jesus either to set aside the cup of suffering, but because He saw that the sin of mankind was so grave that He thought, for a while, it may pass away from Him. Yet very quickly he added to his prayer the words nevertheless not as I will, but as thou wilt. Jesus surrendered himself to the will of the Father and prayed with much intense that being in agony his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And being in an agony he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Luke 22 44. And he came unto the disciples, and found them asleep, and said unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew 26 40-41. How often, we also sleep when God gives us great responsibility. Jesus admonished them to pray that they may not enter into temptation. True, prayer keeps us away from temptations. Prayer brings relief to our problems, trials, and temptations. God knows that we are made out of dust and, that is the reason, why He forgives us. His disciples were so dear to Him, and therefore, He consoled them saying the Spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Jesus went again and repeated the same prayer because bearing of sin of man was so heavy on Him and He returned to see His disciples sleeping again. They were not in a mood to answer Jesus because their eyes were so heavy. Jesus went the third time to the same place, where He went twice before, and repeated the same prayer. He came back and saw His disciples were sleeping again. He said to them sleep on now, and take your rest, it is enough the hour is come, behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. How sad it is that we sleep when God gives us some responsibility and then we may have to hear from Him sleep on now, and take your rest. 
When Elijah said to the Lord that he was the only one to serve him, God said to him that he reserved seven thousand who did not bow their heads to Baal. God's work will never stop if we withdraw from serving him. Jesus suffered for our sake on the cross. After his death, he was buried and his body did not see corruption. He was triumphant over death, and rose from the dead on the third day. He appeared to many for forty days after resurrection, before ascending into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the majesty and pleading on our behalf. He will come again soon to judge the quick and the dead. Please accept Jesus as your personal Savior and receive everlasting life. Thank you for listening to the message, titled, Redeemed, written and brought to you by Leslie M. John, God bless, copyright Leslie M. John, all rights reserved. chapter 11 1 to 2. Revelation explained book chapter 27. From Revelation chapter 11 to 1 to 2. Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff, and I was told, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there, but do not measure the court outside the temple, leave that out, 
for it is given over to the nations, and they will trample the holy city for 42 months, Revelation 11 1-2 ESV. The first two verses of Revelation chapter 11 record a very interesting sign that would be seen in future before the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ. John was given a reed-like rod and the angel said to him to rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar and them that worship therein. The angel restricted him from measuring the outer court of the temple, and the holy city, which is Jerusalem, because they were given to the Gentiles to tread underfoot for 42 months. From these two verses it is inferred that there is going to be temple built, and there is going to be outer court to that temple, and Gentiles will tread not only the outer court of the temple but the whole city of Jerusalem as well, for a specified duration, which is 42 months. 42 months are equal to three and a half years, or 1260 days at the rate of 30 days in a month according to Hebrew calendar. There are few references in the Bible that point to this future temple. Lord Jesus Christ mentioned about the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. He said the abomination would stand in the holy place. The temple has outer court, holy place and the most holy place whereas the whole city of Jerusalem is holy city. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, Matthew 24 15 ESV. Daniel prophesied about the abomination of desolation, and its related events, cf. Daniel 9 25-27, Daniel 11 31, and Daniel 12 11. Apostle Paul referred to this temple wherein the man of sin, who is also called son of perdition otherwise known as Antichrist would sit and exalts himself as God, cf. 2 Thessalonians 2 3-9. Lord Jesus Christ warned about Antichrist. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, Matthew 24 23. Apostle Paul warned not to allow anyone who would try to deceive believers saying Christ has already come. Some believers in Thessalonians had received a letter purportedly written by him saying Lord Jesus has already come. Therefore, the believers in Thessalonica were shaken in mind and were troubled about the destiny of their fathers who died already in their destiny after death. Then, Paul wrote that that the said day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed. Among several interpretations one that stands out unique and convincing is that the church will be caught up before the great tribulation, and then the 70th week of Daniel's 70 week prophecy will commence. Let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come, unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God, 2 Thessalonians 2 3-4 ESV. From the decree made by Artaxerxes to rebuild Jerusalem, one week of seven years was determined, and after 62 weeks of seven years each was the Messiah's crucifixion as prophesied. That is to say at the end of 69 weeks Messiah was to be cut off and it happened exactly as prophesied. There is one more week of seven years that should come to pass, and it is delayed because the church, which was a mystery in the Old Testament period, has come into existence at the end of 69 weeks of the said Daniel's prophecy. The last week of seven years commences after the church is caught up to be with the Lord forever and ever. The man of sin will speak great things and blasphemies because power was given to him to continue for 42 months, three and a half years, which is the great tribulation period. The children of Israel will be protected during this period for 42 months, and the two witnesses shall prophesy for a period of a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth, cf. Revelation 11 3, 12 14, 13 5. Paul writes that apostasy would come first, and the man of sin who is the son of perdition will be revealed only after the restrainer is taken out of the way. After the Herod's temple was destroyed fully by Titus in AD 70, Jerusalem was fully plowed down and leveled to the ground in AD 135. There remained no trace even to guess where exactly Solomon's temple stood. Currently there is Dome of the Rock, under the control of Islam, on approximately at the site where Solomon's temple and Herod's temple stood. Some researchers have also thought that the exact place, where the Herod's temple stood, may be slightly north of the Dome of the Rock while some others say the exact site may be slightly south of the Dome of the Rock. If any such view is true, then the Dome of the Rock would be in the area which is given unto the Gentiles. In addition, according to scriptures, the Holy City, which is Jerusalem, 
shall they tread under foot forty and two months. In man's understanding these are very hard things to perceive, but God knows the future exactly, and we understand the future as revealed to us, with our finite knowledge. The position of the future temple, if it is built, would be before the Ezekiel's temple. 1. Tabernacle, 2. Solomon's temple, 3. Zerubbabel slash Herod's temple, 4. Future temple, 5. Ezekiel's temple. There was tabernacle, a portable structure, of the model of heavenly sanctuary, built according to the command and details given by God to Moses, cf. Exodus 25 9. A large temple of the pattern of tabernacle was built by King Solomon, cf. 1 Kings 6 2. This temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, 2 Kings 25 1-7, Ezra 5-12. Zerubbabel, the governor, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest built a temple in place of Solomon temple that was destroyed, cf. Ezra chapter 3-1-13, Haggai 1-1. Ezekiel prophesied about a temple that will be built during the thousand-year reign of Lord Jesus Christ on this earth, cf. Ezekiel 41.1 There are other views that the temple referred to in 2 Thessalonians 2 as believer's body, and the abomination that was spoken of was the Roman army standing in Jerusalem destroying the temple and the city in AD 70. However, that view leads to understand in the way preterists understand Daniel's 70-week prophecy, which gives no scope of proper explanation as to where the Great Tribulation would fit in Daniel's prophecy. If preterist view is to be taken as the right interpretation of the 70-week prophecy of Daniel, then it is already completed, and Jesus is already here in spiritual form. Their interpretation is, therefore, not a proper exegesis of the scripture. According to the prophecy Antichrist will make a strong covenant with many for one week, and at the midpoint he will break the covenant, and will put an end to sacrifice and offering. The first half of seven-year period, which is three and a half years, will be peaceful and the rest of the three and a half years will be the last days when the wrath of God is seen severely. And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate, until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. Daniel 9:27 ESV Thank you for listening to the exposition of Revelation chapter 11 to 1 to 2, The Future Temple, by Leslie M. John. God bless.